Happy Heritage Day, dear brothers and sisters. So we meet again for yet another session. Um, I'll be using my phone just to ensure that I'm close to the microphone and that <laughs> I don't mess things up. You know, I'm still new at this and it's so interesting that there's actually no perfect recording and there's always something that is imperfect with the recording, whether it's the microphone or sometimes the camera is a little bit too lower or the visual or the lighting. So we've tried really hard with my husband really helping me to get things right. Um, yeah, okay, just to shoot at it, the topic for today is eight reasons why prayers go unanswered and why God is making you wait. Uh, the reason why this topic is so powerful is because it's going to help to equip you that whilst you wait, um, it's going to equip you and help you to position yourself to receive the blessing and to prevent unnecessary delay. Uh, because um, unfortunately, um, uh, a lot of us as believers, we tend to feel that God is a liar, that, that God doesn't want us to, to inherit certain promises. Whereas sometimes we just lack knowledge in, in how we can position ourselves better to receive the promise from God. There are many of those that say that uh, they are living in the promise. Uh, of the promises of God because they're in, in alignment with God and so, there are some that say that you know what I used to be a believer I've heard some a, a lot uh, I used to be a believer God did not answer my prayers so I just stopped and, and then I went and decided to do my own thing because I felt like God was not answering and so today this this is why this uh, topic is very important and it's been pressed upon my spirit so I will try to keep the video short, but what's more important is that I, um, I deliver the content. Okay, so eight reasons why prayers go un unanswered and why God is making you wait. First reason is uh, God is teaching you to seek him. <laughs> um, and the best way I will read as I've written it here on my cell phone, uh, there is actually power in waiting. And we see this in Isaiah 40 verse 31, when it's the scripture says that, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew uh, their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary and they shall walk and not faint. God is teaching us um, to worship him and to climb up higher in our faith and in our development as children of God. There's something about desperation and um, desperation has a way of making us seek God from a whole new other level. Uh, when we are hungry for his presence and hungry for his moves, even our seeking reflects that. Even our prayers reflect that. Uh, even our fasting reflects that, that God, please, um, help me here. I'm in a situation and I need you to answer me. And another reason is more, um, what, I, what I tend to find is that God wants to teach us to worship him. Uh, he is the king of kings. He is the Lord of lords. And just like if you are to visit the Zulu king, before you even come into his presence, you need to prepare the way for him. You need to say, there's a worship that goes before even speaking to the king. And so he's exactly the same. I mean, he is the king of kings. And basically, the type of worship we are doing here on earth is just a, 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 a symbol of what happens in heaven it's a shadow of, of 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 the type of worship that will happen in heaven and so god wants us to first come into his gates um you know to worship him first before we even ask um you know it's important that we learn to worship him uh, a lot of us just want to shoot straight we're doing five minutes prayers ten minutes prayers saying god uh, please do this for me and yet we don't understand that we need to worship him first uh, there's, that's our sacrifice to him is that we just worship him you know that's the only thing we can ever give back to God it's our worship there's nothing else that we can give back to God but the worship that is due to him 
And so Psalms 100 verse 4 says, Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Uh, so God will often... Um, <laughs> want to teach us to worship him you know you are coming before his throne room of grace you are coming before uh, the, the the greatest throne of all you know the king of kings so we are to humble ourselves uh, uh, come in with a posture of humility and just worship and adorn him first and and just really pour out that worship and as you pour out that worship from a genuine heart you will find that you there's a point where you can literally feel the glory and the presence of God has descended. And that's the perfect time to ask. <laughs> a lot of people are asking and they don't even realize they're not even in his presence yet. And it's very important that we understand and can discern when we are in his presence and when we are not in his presence. And if you're praying and you've been praying and you still don't discern his presence, you are not yet in his presence. And God does withholds, withholds his presence um, uh, for a reason, deliberately for a reason, so that we keep knocking we keep knocking we keep praying we worship we praise and, and and we just sing praises to him and that starts to really stir his heart and then you feel that presence and when you feel that presence that's when the heavens are open and that's when you are to plant that seed of asking for that which is close to your heart but please do avoid asking god for anything where you have not put in a sacrifice of worship and sometimes as believers especially believing in the new covenant, we forget that our sacrifice now is not goats or rams or, um, <laughs> or chickens or cows. Our sacrifice now is our worship. And that worship goes before his throne room of grace, like incense rising up to him, to his throne room of grace, bringing his glory down and, 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 and allowing him to just to enjoy the atmosphere and the presence of our worship. God delights in our worship, you know, and it grieves them when we just come straight in a hurry to say, this is what I want, you know, but we haven't yet learned to worship him. And so worship him, yes. Um, the reason why God is also making you wait, I've stated this, he wants a, a deeper relationship with you. And some of us, we came into our faith, into the faith, but our roots are still not deep in the word. Our, our, our roots are still not deep in him, his presence. We still don't really know him. We've heard about him and we felt his presence here and there, but we still don't know his nature. And so it's important that you know that he wants to develop a deeper relationship with us this is the very reason if some of you have noticed why um why i only prophesy to people <laughs> that god has led me to prophesy to uh and 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 there are so many times when i've received emails where people are seeking for my input and great and you know i it's 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 honorable and 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 i'm honored and um but 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 the the role and the goal for this uh channel is to steer you closer to jesus christ not to me you know my gift can fall short i can fall short i'm human you know and 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 my goal is to get you to trust more in the living god uh than people you know and sometimes i hear messages where a person says i've prayed on this and i'm uh, and and this still hasn't happened and and, and sometimes you'll find that the Holy Spirit is wanting you to literally wait on him to still keep praying, praising and worship. So, I mean, there were moments where I, I literally waited on God for a month and I'd fasted and he hadn't given me an answer. And then I would still keep knocking. And then eventually he would give me the answer because he saw that I was persistent. I was seeking him and the Lord wants us to do that. You know, he doesn't want us to say, if I don't get the answer, I'm jumping off. I need to get somebody else to give me an answer because I'm not willing to wait on him, you know, and he always comes through. I, I, if there's one thing I can bank on and promise you is that God always comes through. He always answers prayers, you know, but there's usually something inside of us. He wants to, uh, to, uh, to cleanse us. Sometimes there's certain areas that are hidden even from ourselves about, about us. And so he, he wants to work on those areas so that as he answers you, when he answers you, you are so ready for what it is that you're asking for. Okay. And point number three, 
Oh, and it's so funny. I've gotten to that. He's working on your character. Yes, again, he's working on your character to prepare you for the promise because your character is not yet developed enough to be able to handle the magnitude of the blessing you are ask, asking for and it just may destroy you. You know, so often we hear of people asking for, for really big things, you know, trusting God for big things. And, 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 and I'm not saying go to God with... Uh, with you not believing in him you know he wants to give you gr uh, big things great things great and mighty things you know he wants you to be a display of his splendor and glory by how much he blesses you and the scripture for this is Isaiah 61 it is the Lord's will to bless us because he wants other people that are not believers to ask you how how are you doing it how are you achieving this how, why is it that the economy is bad but yet you are living and thriving and he wants, God wants to use that opportunity for you to minister to others, to say, no, it is the God of Israel. You know, it's, 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 it's Christ. It's through Christ, you know, uh, that, um, it, that it's not through me, but through Christ. And this provides an opportunity to draw those who are non-believers to him. So it is God's will to bless you, not just for you, but so that you're an example to others of his goodness and glory and that he is able and that others do not need to go to other foreign gods seeking, you know, false sources that will only bind them and their families just so that, and people do this just so that they can eat, you know. Um, some, it, many, it's greed, but a lot is also, I just need to eat. And they don't know that God is more than able, you know, to provide anything and everything for them, you know? So, um, so yeah, another fourth, uh, uh, reason why God is making you wait is that your motives are wrong. You know, your motives are wrong. Your motives, are, uh, your requests could be, uh, rooted in greed. It could be rooted in pride. It could be rooted in, I want people to see me, you know? And, and God discerns our intentions behind our prayers, not just the words we speak, but the spirit from which we speak them. And, um, and so God will often wait for us until our hearts is sanctified according to his will and to ensure that we also can identify that, oh my goodness, uh, my asking is a little bit selfish. And, 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 and God will always wait until uh, we get to that revelation that, oh, okay, maybe I should start praying a different prayer. And, you know, we've all fallen short. You know, we've all sinned. We've all, uh, um, you know, spoken prayers that were selfish because uh, we, we were seeking our will and not his will for us. Okay, another fifth sign is that uh, the reason why you are waiting and your prayers have gone unanswered is that God gave you an instruction where the blessing was going to be. And because you weren't obedient to the instruction, you did not inherit the promise that God had planned for you to inherit. And uh, this is because God will sometimes lead you to the place of your blessing. And if you are not at the right place at the right time, you will miss that window of opportunity. You know what? I've experienced this so many times. You know, there was a time when the Lord asked me to catch a flight from Johannesburg to go to Durban and to seek him deeply. I went in, booked a hotel, prayed, and I spent like hours with him and like after that prayer, there were so many breakthroughs. But then he said to me, go to the beach. I would like for you to witness to the people around at the beach and speak to them about my glory. And of course, it's daunting, but I went, I followed. And as I was ministering and witnessing to the people about Jesus Christ and how he saved me, I noticed that a, a crowd started to gather around me. Literally, a crowd from nowhere literally started to gather around me. People were so hungry for the gospel. I was amazed at how many people actually so desperately hungry for the presence of God and for the gospel. And I noticed an Indian gentleman just standing afar wearing his construction clothes. Uh, his, um, he was wearing an overall, a blue overall, an Indian gentleman just listening to me. And he's standing there and I'm thinking, and, and I thought, oh, he's wanting you know, to hear the, uh, what it is that I'm speaking about, you know, and he's, and the presence of, I could feel the presence of God there, but he was just standing there listening to me in the background, merely observing this whole thing. And then after the crowd had left, and as I left, I remember I was going up the stairs. I had um, left, I had left the, 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 the sand part of the beach and I was going up the stairs, wooden stairs. And then he stopped me <laughs> and he said to me, I came here for you. God sent me here to speak to you. And he said to me, because you've been obedient, this is what's going to happen. And then he started prophesying. 
<laughs> what was going to happen in our lives and our business and it's immediate it's, and it's crazy because it was as if as soon as he released the word things immediately started changing for us and it brought us into a season of divine acceleration we were like goodness i mean this guy was so specific and then i wanted to know more and i realized he wasn't just okay i, I don't want to some would say he would have been an angel because at the accuracy and at the level he was speaking to us about i was like wow never again will god ask me to do something and and i sit on <laughs> you know and and i sit on it and i ponder if maybe i should do it if maybe i should not so now i've learned that if god says move i move uh, Psalms 23, it says that he leads us to green pastures and still waters, which means that the shepherd will lead us like he leads his flock, like he, like a shepherd leads his sheep. He will lead us to those green pastures and still waters. And if we are not able to discern his voice, his leading, we will stay behind and say, and say that, no, God is not answering my prayers, whereas he's been leading you and sometimes you've been hearing him and you are not acting and so therefore you are not led into that blessing okay uh, so um, point number seven the reason why god is making you wait and why your prayers have gone unanswered is that you have unforgiveness i mean there were times when i've, I've i know this all too well um god has really had to work on my heart you know some of us have gone through so many hurtful things so much pain people have deceived us betrayed us you know we've done the best that we could for them we've loved them and sometimes that causes trauma, you know. Sometimes we've been rejected. Sometimes, you know, uh, we've been cheated of things that were rightfully ours by people. And before you know it, you've got a spirit of unforgiveness. And let me tell you, when you have a spirit of unforgiveness, God does not forgive you for your sins. Because in the Lord's Prayer, it clearly states that you're only forgiven as much as you have forgiven others. So if you are entrusting God to cancel your debt, if God has canceled your debt, as in he's forgiven your sins. Why should you hold others indebted to you for what they failed to, to, um, to do for you or what they owe you? You are called to release people and leave all judgments to God. Point number eight. Um, and, 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 uh, point number eight says a scripture that i've actually written here and it says that and we know that all things work together for good to them this is romans 8 verse 28 and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god to them who are called according to his purpose and the point of point number eight is this you are asking for something that is not his will for you it is therefore best to seek his will first before you even ask so yeah and so, so many of us we miss that uh, romans 8 28 please go back read it again it says and we know that all things work together for good to them that love god them that love god you have to love god to them that are called by him according to his purpose so it's important to ask in alignment with the purpose that god has called you for <laughs> this is another hidden mystery that we miss psalms 1 to 7 says that unless the lord builds the house those who labor labor in vain and you'd be surprised how many of us are asking for things that god has not uh, it's not God's intention for us to build those things or to even ask for those things because they are not in alignment with his purpose for us. And I'm referring to things that are outside of his covenant promise, which is another uh, teaching for another day. But there are so many of us that are not even positioned in alignment with God's purpose for our lives. Some of us are building businesses that God never asked us to build. Some of us are in positions and in careers that are not in alignment with his will for us. And so the most important thing with this is to literally just ask God, God, show me your will for my life. What are you calling me for in the marketplace? What are you calling me for in terms of ministry? How do you want to use me? And the quicker and sooner you get aligned with that, it's almost like everything else aligns or your that starts to literally be in a row. And so I invite you, my brothers and sisters, to ask God for his, for his will and purpose for your life. And you will realize that he will start to bring you to a point of divine acceleration because you are walking according to his purpose you are in line with him 
So let us uh, close in prayer. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for this beautiful heritage day, Lord, and that you've spoken this beautiful message, Heavenly Father, that may reach the ears of those that need to hear it. Father, I pray for you in Ganzako that, Lord, may you cover and bless them. May you be a covering of protection, a hedge of fire, a hedge of protection around them, Lord. May you teach them and show them your divine purpose and will for their lives, for their individual lives. And Father, I just want to thank you for this time that we could come together and minister in your presence in the mighty name of jesus christ we pray amen until next time beloved and uh, brothers and sisters cheers Mwah.